I'm William Weins and I'm, I'm delighted uh, to be at EuroPCR 2018, PCR TV studio, and uh, I am with uh, Dr. Olivier Muller. Olivier, hello. kindly introduce yourself. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Olivier Muller. Uh, I'm working in Lausanne and I'm uh, delighted to be uh, here and I have the responsibility to focus on complication, especially on stent dislodgement. Great. And together with Dr. Muller, we have Jun Fukamizu from uh, Terumo Learning Edge. And your background is? For the medical education at this moment. Medical education. Yes. Now, the reason why we are together is to present this new project between Terumo Learning Edge and PCR. Can you tell, perhaps, in a few words, what it entails? So, um, we intend to uh, have a joint session between industry and academy. I think uh, academy has a lot of uh, tools in the box to teach, uh, and industry has the same on their side. And I think that uh, having a joint session is the uh, probably the best way to educate and deliver uh, education. Well, thank you. I mean, the session is perhaps a weak description because, um, uh, Jun, exactly wh what is the, um, can you describe what is the purpose of this joint venture, of this learning experience? So we are promoting on a simulation based learning. And then the simulation we can we can use the silicon vessel model uh, scanned by the CT of the body and then we make a silicon model and then we use the real devices how they behave or during the PCA procedures in complex PCA procedures and then we magnify these you know, procedures including the device behavior to enlarge in front of your screen on the screen so that you can see the, all the procedures on your screen. Oh, great. And uh, it's magnified so you really understand what's going on. Yeah. Now, um, you're focusing, you mentioned, uh, Olivier, on stand dislodgement, right? Yes. Uh, this, uh, these sessions are focusing on one rare complication, um, which is stand dislodgement. It's a rare complication, but it happens. And uh, indeed, you have to be prepared before than after. So uh, the f purpose of this session is to uh, be familiar with that kind of complication and how to manage it. So, uh, Jun, the process is um, when you're working, for instance, on stand dislodgement. What is the process of the simulation-based learning? So the simulation-based learning, the basically starting with a scenario, which particular case we encounter today. For example, the distant dislodgement in the mid-LAD. And after that, we have open discussion. What is your knowledge about this case? And then we move to the simulation-based, you know, the hands-on program after the brief after that the briefing. I think I understand. So the physicians, the colleagues who participate in one of those learning sessions are faced with the problem, almost real life. Everybody sees on the screen magnified what's going on and then they work together as a team to try and find out, you know, how to help you out of this difficult situation and get this stent out, I suppose, or do whatever is needed. Is that what happens? Yeah, it's very important to understand that when you learn something, you can hear a lecture or you can uh, watch a live case, but we are not at that level. We are at the level above in terms of education because we're going to learn practically how to deal with this complication. Mm -hmm. We are practicing so we know how and we know how to deal it practically, which is a little bit 
different from what yeah. we can be delivered here. Plus, you have the opportunity as a participating physician to think of a strategy and uh, you will find out by yourself that it doesn't work. Is that yeah. what happens? Exactly. Yeah. We will have a situation, so maybe like a stent dislodgement with the wire inside and what to do. So you will have several people around the table trying to get and organize the best management for the situation practically and discussing the situation in order to have a clear view of how to manage how to and it. then mm -hmm. maybe to prevent it yeah. afterwards. Because you understand why eventually it dislodged. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So it looks like the, the system, the hardware, is, can be used for um, analysis of different uh, complications. So June, you have experience with other situations than stand dislodgement? Yeah, absolutely. So we started or uh, this simulation-based learning uh, since 2012. Since then, we developed several other complication management mm -hmm. for uh, aside or the stand dislodgement or the guide wire stack in the calcified regions. The, the other one is uh, uh, stand at uh, Ivas Cassetta uh, stack or uh, in the stand. And then the other one is a balloon dysfunction. Balloon doesn't okay. deflate yeah. well. And then the other one we are now promoting is pa uh, perforation. Perforation. Perforation so management. Um, from what I understand, um, it can make a huge difference because it's a rare complication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, some of them are really life-threatening, isn't it? And you need to be able to fix them quickly. And I suppose that any physician who's been exposed to this uh, simulation-based learning will know exactly what works and what doesn't work. So this seems to be a technique that uh, has a lot of, a lot of uh, potential, right? Mm -hmm. Life-saving. Have you tested it yourself? I tested. It's incredible. I think uh, you understand what doesn't work and you just understress that. Uh, and you learn from what doesn't work and you learn from what's working. Mm. Uh, and you can see visually your stent crushing in the guiding or when you use a balloon and you want to retrieve it, it doesn't work because it's uh, not aligned with the guiding. So you learn this, all these phenomenon that doesn't work and work. Mm. Uh, so practically mm. it's incredible. So each time you organize a session like this with a group of physicians, it's going to be a different scenario depending on the group that you're working with, right? Yes. Now, is there, can you generalize it? Is there a common like strategy at the end that can be shared with others, even though they didn't discover it by themselves? Mm -hmm. What is the deliverable um, yes. for the physicians who's participating and for the community? Yes. Well, the important thing is how many options in your mind that's why the, during the discussion, we list up all the possible options. Even though they can work, they cannot work. And after the trial, and we prioritize, okay, it's work, it's work, it doesn't work, it doesn't oh. work. So this is the beauty of the trial of any possible you know, the, uh, the options without harming patients. So, I mean, you're an expert in medical education. This is what is called self-directed learning, right? Absolutely. And as you alluded to, Olivier, in the beginning, adults remember what they have discovered by themselves much better. And they will use that information much more than if they're being told you should do this or that way. So this sounds like really a great, great learning experience. We're delighted to have this joint venture with, with uh, Terumo Learning Edge. We're going to bring it further. And um, I think it will have a very profound impact on uh, uh, the practice. And I think it can be life-saving when we are trying to deal with potentially life-threatening complications. So thank you very much for engaging in this project and the opportunity to work together on it. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, June. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.